Well, Stephanie, um, welcome to the channel. I'm going to start off with the typical questions here uh, first, and then we'll get into the really granular details because I've been looking forward to having you on my channel for, actually, I say quite a while, but um, I've only heard of you for the last week or two. Uh, but still, for that entire time period, I really wanted you to have uh, to be on my channel. So, of course, the typical questions, who are you um, and what brought you to Carnivore to begin with? Well, um, I'm from the Czech Republic originally, and so uh, I, I can apologize for my English mistakes later on because uh, it's not my native language. Uh, but what brought me to Carnivore was my boyfriend, because before I met him, I was vegan actually and vegetarian. I was never real vegan, like all these fruitarians who eat just fruit and they look like from concentration camp after a few years because I was fat actually and I was, you know, vegetarian, vegan, vegetarian, vegan because veganism, veganism is very unsustainable so I had to switch sometimes to get some dairy at least and eggs. Um, but I would say back then that actually I was vegan, yeah, for, for all the time. So. That's why I'm very, very doubtful when a vegan woman or a vegan man tells me, yeah, yeah, I am actually vegan for 12 years. And I'm like, really? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so that, that basically what I was before. I suffer from many um, conditions, physical, but may mainly mental. Uh, I was very broken, very, very broken. And basically, when I started the carnivore diet, it was actually immediate, like after a week, I saw a significant improvement in the physical issues, mainly such as eczema. I had like a horrible eczema on my fingers, on my, on my, on my hands, and it was really bad. I thought it's from soy sauce because at the time I worked in an Asian restaurant, but it wasn't only soy sauce. It was like uh, all the fruit that I ate, all the vegetable. Actually, I would say it was mainly fruit. Like if I eat it still now in uh, a higher quantity or when I ate it after a long time of strict, strict carnivore, it was like back immediately that day. So... I would say that's the issue because fructose is very toxic. So... I would say that would make sense even. Uh, the same was with acne. I was on very strict carnivore for a few months, like six months or something. I didn't even have dairy except for butter and sometimes some high fat dairy, like cheese. But I didn't drink any milk or such things. And I went to street carnivore after like a week already. So for me, even though I was vegan or plant based, before it wasn't a, any issue except for constipation maybe because I didn't eat enough fat, I wasn't used to it. So, uh, But it went all quite fast and I basically experienced, except for what I said, I had a bad stomach pain at one point. So it was for like a year before I started carnivore. And after two weeks, it was away. I didn't feel anything in my stomach. That was like a big relief because it was really bad before. Um, what also changed, but that was like in a longer perspective, was my periods. Uh, and still now, even though it's uh, almost two years, I experienced changes from how it was even like, I don't know, three months ago. There, It's still improving because uh, back then, like really long time ago when I was like 12, uh, I had anorexia and I lost my period for a few years. And then when I gained weight and I got other eating disorders, but I gained weight, uh, I got my period back, but it was bad. It was either very short cycles or long cycles or, and I had very bad cramps. Like I wouldn't be able to just be normally doing something even in the bed. I had to lay in a specific position with my legs in a specific angle. It was really bad. I Sometimes I couldn't even go to school. And yeah, so, so that, that's what changed. Um, there are more things, but they're more minor. And obviously my mental health is completely fine now. I have no issues. And uh, yeah, so that's it, I would say. 
Interesting. Yeah. Um, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that, you know, you're, you're different, you were different from most vegans and that you weren't emaciated. Uh, you were overweight and that's actually yeah. something that I talk about a lot. You're, you'll never see, you'll never see a, a moderately, uh, physiqued, let's say vegan where they actually look healthy. You'll either see them emaciated or you'll see them overweight. I see this all the time. Uh, most of the emaciated vegans will say that you're overweight on vegan if you're eating the processed vegan food. Uh, but they're still emaciated. So, you know, who, who's to, who are you, you know, supposed to listen to at that point? Yeah. And, and also those vegans that are overweight in a way, you could say they're still, um, emaciated in terms of the amount of muscle they have on their body. They still have very little muscle. It's just, it's covered up by a bunch of, of fat. Um, yeah. You also said, you know, you, you don't believe vegans whenever they say that, oh, I've been vegan for over a decade, and I completely understand that. I'm one of those people that I give the benefit of the doubt when I hear that. Usually what I what I say is, okay, well, let's look at what's going on with your health. And invariably, every time that you, you, you try and you try and press, you know, what's going on with your health, either they don't tell you or they'll say all of these things are happening to them and they'll blame it on things like parasites. Uh, like some something outlandish uh there there yeah. was yeah th there's a there's a vegan uh, i don't i don't talk to them regularly but I, I i used to uh years ago uh we never met in person it was it was an online thing but she she was vegan for over she said she at, she at least claims that she's been vegan for over a decade about 14 years but what happened is her nails and her hair started falling out to the point where she actually went to the the clinic and uh they they saw that her b12 was so low they had to inject it into her uh and so you know at the end of the day if they are doing it for over a decade first of all it's really rare even anecdotally they most most vegans do not get that far but if if they genuinely are they're not from what i've seen not living a good life at all even with supplementation um but yeah you, you get this i think people forgot to believe their eyes they don't believe them they just believe some numbers and you know papers but like look you see uh, a completely destroyed human with dark eye circles as hell completely dead eyes that's that's what you can see on first sight but no he's healthy because he's vegan and that's healthy right and i actually there are periods when okay there were periods when i ate junk like complete junk that's true but there were also periods when I remember I ate lots of vegetable, I cooked for myself because I actually enjoyed cooking back then because I had nothing better to do. <laughs> now, I, now I'm happy, I, I can just put, you know, some meat on a plate and I can do something better. But yeah, back then I enjoyed it and I cooked a lot, lots of vegetable, lentils, these healthy proteins and all that crap. And I still was fat. So it's in my family, actually, most of my family members are overweight. So um, I believe also from how my dad looks, how my grandma looks, I believe I have some more like Nordic um, ancestors. So I think also that's why, because there are differences genetically, how much you're um, supposed to weigh, let's say, like a healthy weight. I will have a healthy weight on a different level than my friend who is Asian. So, so yeah, and I think many people, many people have this, have this idea that on the carnivore diet they'll lose weight. But for example, my friend, she was, she's half Asian and she actually gained weight, but still she claimed that she actually feels better. Like she wanted to lose weight, but when she went on carnivore and she healed in other ways mentally and whatever kind of uh, healing, she said, actually, I feel good even though I gained weight though. So. Yeah, carnivore seems to be, it's not really, a lot of people will go to it for weight loss um, when in reality, they may actually need to gain weight in the form of, you know, when we say weight, it's a very vague term, it's a very broad term. What does it mean? You, you know, you're talking about muscle, you're talking about fat, you're talking about water. Really, when you say you want to lose weight, most people want to lose excess fat and water that's on their bodies. But if they if they gain weight and they feel a lot better and their body composition looks better appearance-wise, even in the mirror, they realize, oh, actually, my weight wasn't exactly the issue. It was my body composition position that was the that was the issue you know what was that weight made up of so whenever they transition to carnivore they may see that they gain weight i actually uh i gained weight after about a year of doing strict carnivore originally i was i was 135 pounds and i was um well, I'm, I'm 5'11", so I was actually, that, that equates to me being very skinny. Let's just put it uh, simply. Uh, the thing was, is after a year of doing that, though, I actually started to gain 
weight, but my body composition was looking better. In reality, I was probably putting more muscle on without resistance training. I was going through a lot of, of problems on my own. You know, my story is very, you know, complicated in terms of what I went through. Um, and I think my body was in repair mode. And so I think a lot of people can see that happen whenever they go to carnivore too. So yeah, whenever people focus on a, on a number on a scale, I sort of, I try and warn them that, hey, you know, be careful with that because that can be a very unhealthy behavior. Don't try, don't think that losing weight necessarily is a win. And don't think that gaining weight is necessarily a loss, right? Um, but you, you mentioned that you were emotionally broken on your, on your previous diet. But I, I'm, I'm very curious, do you think, do you think that the, 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 when, when you say broken, do you mean, um, can you expound upon what you mean by broken? Do you mean like just mentally ill in general, or do you mean like lost as, as, as a soul in the world? Cause, or both? Uh, both. Yeah. Yeah. Be yeah. I was, so firstly, as I said, I had anorexia and then it all went to complete shit because I started to have depression and anxiety, all these, you know, regular, all this regular stuff, but I wanted to myself and all that all that crap and it was because i started to eat extremely much when the covid started because I, I i i'm a dancer i used to be a dancer for like 12 years but like it's a it's a hard thing because you're there every day you work out every day cardio so it also has a big impact and then it stopped because of the quarantine and covid and all that and i was so malnourished back then um really i actually my weight wasn't that bad but i looked horrible i was really extremely skinny and i ate nothing almost and then i started eating so much because my body was so hungry but i started eating garbage obviously uh that's also when all the vegetarianism started and then i started to have a mental disorder my mom has like excessive eating so you overeat then you don't eat you overeat and like that in cycles and i so much wanted to do a diet you know like you will do seven diet seven days uh, any kind of a diet and you'll lose 20 kilos and all all these things like i don't know i was 13 so um <laughs> and then it didn't work and i wasn't able to do it i swear i wasn't able to do it for one day for one day straight i never for like five years i tried every day and i and i went crazy like what the hell am i doing i'm not able to do a diet i'm not able to control myself for one day for one single day then i got bulimia because i was so desperate and after I kind of healed, but I was still very broken because I just started to eat whatever I wanted. I just said, okay, f it. I'll be fat, whatever. Because I just didn't know what else to do. And then it ended up that I was, I, I wouldn't say I was particularly mentally ill, like depression or something like that. But I was just so emotional. Like sometimes I felt like crying and, you know, all these flows and back and forth. So... That that was that was the the point when I started carnivore. It wasn't really that bad as it used to be before, but it was still bad enough. So I think people don't realize, you know, I think that's that's a very big issue that some people tell me or many people actually tell me, oh, but like, that's your opinion that the carnivore diet is good because many people will tell you that their diet is the best because they feel so good and they experience so many good things. But that's the difference. Like if you go from a complete junk so even a vegan diet, let's say, you'll feel better because you'll lose weight. But that's not the point. Like, you can go further. And I think that's what I experienced. So I gained weight. I felt better mentally, but I wasn't healthy at all. It was just a bit better. So I thought, okay, that's the way. But then I found carnivore and I realized, well, but it's, it's actually, it was actually horrible how I was before. But back then I thought it's actually okay. So I think that's that's a very common issue with this that people think they're they feel so great but they actually don't feel that great when you look at the scale. Yeah, they don't they don't actually think about what the it, it's either that they don't think about what they're going through and what and the fact that it could very well be attributed to their diet or they're so used to what they're going through that they they're numb to it. You know, they they don't know what they're missing out on in many cases. So when people are on their regular diet and they say that they feel fine, first of all, my inclination is to be like, okay, well, fine, you know, go ahead and keep doing you. And at the end of the day, that's sort of what I conclude, like keep, keep doing you if you really insist on doing that. But at, in reality, what I actually do is I say, okay, well, listen, if, you're, if you want to see what you're missing out on, because I think that you're probably, 
you're you know you're you, you don't know what you're missing out on then you know talk to me and I, I can give you some more insight about this because i think that you can really benefit but then of course you know if people are pe people really really don't like change because change is too much chaos they like order they like being very set in their ways because whenever you're exposed to too much chaos it's very intimidating sometimes and so even even that little bit of of change can be discouraging to them and they don't want to they don't want to adopt it so at the end of the day you know horses and water so you know that's that's what i say but you know it's really interesting you you said that fruit seemed to exacerbate your eczema seemed to be the main culprit and i found that really interesting i just put a note down here because most people in the animal-based community like to say that fruit is one of the least toxic plant foods to consume and that's why they include it in their diet they say that fruit and honey is uh, and i'm really glad that you mentioned that fructose is in and of itself effectively a toxin and it can really cause a lot of inflammation uh, i think it's one of the main culprits when it comes to the um the blame of uric acid on gout uh the it, it's really an association between gout and uric acid but there's two things that cause uric acid buildup one of which yes can be animal protein consumption and, and and degradation but the other the main culprit is fructose metabolism so you know i'm, I'm glad that you brought that up do, do, have you uh have you i think you still you said that you still can experience that when you've gone on carnivore if you try to even have a little bit of fruit you do, do you still have those eggs well, and I, I'm not saying I never eat fruit even now. Like I would never say I'm 100% carnivore every day, just a steak and that's it. Sometimes I get some honey in my yogurt, I don't know. But um, this is what I experienced because now I think I'm used to it, to get some exposure of the fruit. But I remember when I was on strict, like really strict carnivore, as I said, after that it was crazy. Like I even gained weight. Okay, I, I ate a lot of it, I would say. Because my dad had some cherries on the tree, so I was eating cherries. And then I got acne, my hair was waxy as hell, my my hands were full of uh, full of that eczema. So, and even now when I eat something like, let's say, more sugar, because usually I, I, when I eat fruit, it's quite low in sugar, like passion fruit or uh, strawberries, some berries and so on. But uh, if I if I eat more of the high, more of the fruit and high in sugar, I can feel it on my hands that I'm getting the eczema. And it doesn't get to the point that it's like covered, obviously, because I don't eat it anymore afterwards, but I can feel it and it's itchy, you know? So I think, I think it's the fruit, like it's sugar in general, but I think it can also happen with fruit because I experience it myself. So it's not like fruit is a healthy, healthy sugar. It's still, it's still sugar. So, um, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you understand that because, you know, so much for, for the sugar molecules in fruit being magically different than any other sugar molecule that you, uh, that, that you encounter it in. Um, yeah. whenever, did you ever get sucked into the animal based approach? Like the, uh, the Paul Saladino kind of approach? Cause most people in the space actually do at some point, but it seemed like you bypassed that. Well, um, I think, well, I'll say that way. I like raw meat and I like to eat this raw way because it just satiates me much more. I eat less and so on. I'm not saying eating cooked meat is necessarily bad, but it just works for me to eat this way. Um, as I said, sometimes I eat some fruit and honey, but it's more like that I'm an addict. It's not that I would think it's good, right? So if someone ever asked me, do you think fruit is good for you? No, it's not. Is definitely not good for you. Maybe if you're sick and uh, you cannot ground or whatever, uh, and you get some orange juice next to it, whatever, once, okay, you can get some vitamin C. But as a, as a regular thing to eat and think it's good, no, no, no. I don't believe it's good. And actually fructose, as I said, is very toxic. Apparently it's worse, much worse in glycation than glucose. So, and also, as you mentioned, gout um, is the fructose metabolism. So, I don't think fruit is good, neither honey, because that's fructose. Uh, but if you sometimes eat some of it, okay. What I think is Paul Saladino, what, what, I, what I find interesting, he is very conscious about his health. Because unlike other carnivores, he's also into... You know, not wearing synthetic clothes. He doesn't use any chemicals in his washing and, you know, all these things. Red light even in his fridge. And uh, he's, he's very granular when it comes to that. 
but for some reason he's such an addict that he actually he actually puts it as a yeah that's that's the good way to eat you know i think he copes because he cannot do the carnivore diet because he's a he's an addict and he's not trying anymore to keep it that way but you know i i do sports so i can eat some but you you never know how much you actually burn or burn how much of the sugar you actually use so you eat some amount of sugar if you eat i don't know uh, five grams and then you go to sport like obviously you're gonna use that five grams is nothing but when he eats 300 grams and then he thinks i'm gonna surf and i'm gonna use all the sugar well that's probably not the the, the right thing to do 280 to 320 grams of carbohydrates yeah. per day according to his own words over a year ago i believe and i eat 280 to 320 grams of carbohydrates a day uh, i was probably yeah, yeah it's about two years ago now yeah um the thing about Paul, I actually might cut this out. I just want to tell you this right now, though. Not only is Paul an addict, or at least that's what we believe, uh, he's actually now an established, proven liar when it comes to, to what he's been doing. He actually just uploaded a little clip uh, of, of a previous debate he had with Anthony Chafee. And in that clip, Anthony Chafee was bringing up you know, multiple different researchers and talking about what their conclusions were and what they found with respect to fruit sugar and the supposed effects of that sugar on the body, what, what the inferences were. And um, Bart, fi or, uh, I'm sorry, Anthony said Bart's name. And the other five people he had okay, said. Okay, I know about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the other five names that he had listed, Paul was completely, he didn't say anything. He was just listening. And then you can hear whenever Anthony says Bart's name. Immediately, Paul, you can Paul, you can hear Paul in the background scoff and go, "Yeah, I don't know who that is, but okay." Some people make like uh, um, you know, Bart K is that you know if you eat a large bowl, I, 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 don't, I don't know who that is, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> you go to Bart, yeah, yeah. you go to Bart's Odyssey, and they've done two interviews with each other that are like an hour and a half long. All right, what's up, you guys? I am here with Bart K. Bart is in New Zealand. We've never met in person, but we're just kind of sitting down together to dialogue. What is up, you guys? Welcome to another episode. I am thinking of names for this. I'm here with Bart K. Yeah. <laughs> good stuff. Yeah, my boyfriend told me, so that that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> really good stuff. Yeah. So you did say, by the way, just to just to finish up on this on this topic uh, of you being vegan, I wanted to ask you first of all if you were if you were emotionally broken once again to use your words do you think that actually influenced you to become vegan in the first place like were you primarily influenced by the moral argument for uh for veganism or was it more the health argument well i think you either have to be stupid or very very mentally ill to be vegan because if you truly believe that humans are herbivores then okay good luck well, if you're, I don't know, 14 years old, it's a different story. But if you're 30 and then you're like, yeah, humans are herbivores. We should eat lots of fiber. You should like a cow then on the toilet. But yeah, it's good for me. So that's, that's stupid. But with me, I didn't really care. Like, I didn't think it's good for me anyhow. I didn't think it's healthy. But I just hated myself and I, and I thought I'm going to save the planet at least. So at least I'm good for something, right? Um, I never thought it's good for me. I never argued with, them, with my parents when they, when, because they disliked it, that I was vegan. So uh, they kept telling me that it's bad and I should eat some meat and blah, blah, blah. And I, I never attacked them when it comes to the, the science or the, the biology. I always just mentioned the morals and that uh, cows are farting and that uh, the, the, the forests are being cut because of the cows and so on, you know, all that usual garbage. Yeah, okay okay yeah and then and then just the final note you, you said you lost your period on veganism i wanted to say it's not exactly a question per se but um is a note that i wanted to add it seems that you know or i'm sorry you, you lost your period at one point uh whenever you were anorexic right um first of all did you ever learn you lose it whenever you were vegan i think did you say that or did you say that you, you had irregular um, no, menstrual cycles no but i was basically i ate very little meat meat or any animal product back then uh, my diet consisted of vegetable fruit and maybe one slice of ham or something so 
Okay. You know. Yeah, I think that I think that veganism a lot of a lot of vegans will lose their period as well. Uh, Steak and Butter Gal is one of these main carnivore influencers that talks about having done that, and uh, she she talks about how uh, it seems to be the case that veganism in many ways will mimic anorexia for obvious reasons, the nutritional deficiency. So if someone loses their period whenever they're anorexic. You know, it's not a shock that people on vegan on a vegan diet will also lose their period for very similar reasons. It's nutritional deficiency. You know, their body goes into shutdown mode, so to speak. But yeah, I thought that was that was pretty interesting. And there, there is just one interesting thing about that because I, I remember listening to a video and there was a vegan girl and she actually made an argument that that she lost period is actually good because all the people that have period is not supposed to be that way it's 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 wrong because you're bleeding that's wrong so actually she's the she's the healthy one because she doesn't have her period yep i've seen that argument too i've seen that from from actual vegan doctors it's amazing and by amazing <laughs> i mean appalling it's 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 criminal yeah. actually to be telling people that like it's really bad so let's shift this over for a minute. You became, I believe, a certified nutritionist, so to speak, uh, at the age of, yeah. what was it, 17 or 18? Uh, well, 18, yeah. 18. I got the paper when I was 18. So how was that? What did that require and what were you taught? That's pretty impressive. <laughs> that's actually, that's really impressive that, that you've done that that young. So Well, <laughs> it was funny. Um, Bart K always hates these, uh, these paper nutritionists, you know, who, who have a paper in their ass but I did it because people like it to see that I have something uh, I'm actually thinking of doing one online one more that is like ketogenic because I'm afraid they're gonna take it away from me <laughs> because of what you're <laughs> because saying because of the carnivore diet right because I'm not promoting the balanced diet that everyone has to has to promote well, but it was funny, so uh, it was like a course, you went there every every weekend. I didn't actually go there most of the time because I hated it, but you were supposed to go there every week and it was always, I'm sick, I'm blah, blah. But um, most of the time I did, did go there because it was online also many times, so there I, I was, I was present. But whenever I was there, it was actually funny. Like in the beginning, I went there every time because I enjoyed to hear, hear all that crap. They were so stupid. Like I, they were so incredibly stupid. I even said to them so many, like I, I asked them questions and they weren't able to answer. That's always what happens. Once you ask them questions, you're like, uh, 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 because it's good. Okay, thank you. I asked them because they kept saying, oh, but like you should eat just this amount of salt exactly because if you eat one gram more, you're gonna blah, blah, blah. And I asked them, oh, why is that? Like, what's wrong? What happens when you eat too much salt? Uh, uh, salt holds water. Salt is not good. I'm like, okay, thank you. <laughs> and then I, you know, some of the, there was literally one woman. I'm not sure if I can say it like this because if they hear this video, they'll go crazy. <laughs> Say whatever you want, but please, please say one, everything. One woman, one woman seemed really, really like I have to say she did, and she was so out. She was very kind, but she was so out of everything that like she had no clue what the hell is she talking about. And I think that was the one that I asked on the salt. And then um, there was a guy. He was apparently a, a university teacher in I don't know biochemistry and some garbage. And then he was talking about uh, an anatomy. Yeah, I think it was something in anatomy, but like a specific field. And he was talking about the anatomy part. Um, and and I asked him, okay, so why do you? Because they kept talking about calories that that killed me like all the time. C I C O calories out, calories in. And I asked him, okay, so so what's What's with the calories? Like, to me, it doesn't make sense. I explained it, you know, very roughly because we didn't have lots of time. So I just, you know, covered the basics. And he was like, uh, uh, yeah, that's true. But but I think it's still a good thing to use it, like, uh, just to know what what you should eat. And So basically, everything you said was right, but we're still going to use... <laughs> the yeah. same <laughs> metric because we don't have an alternative and that was in the course yeah. and so we can't change yeah yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know otherwise i got 200 pages of crap that was really crap literally like third of it was only about legislative so what can you use when you make food like that and blah 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 and then i swear if if 
if they didn't include carbohydrates in the diet, it would be half shorter. I swear it would. Because so much of it was just about carbohydrates. Such useless crap that was there in it. And I had to read it and remember that crap. That was horrible. Like, I had to, you know, lie. Because I knew it's, it's wrong what they're saying. And I still had to, like, okay, I'm gonna write it there. But the funniest part was when I had the oral exam. Because there was the written and then the oral exam. And they wanted me to create a meal plan. I, I wanted to make a carnivore meal plan, but I know they I knew they wouldn't let me go through. So I had to make like a low carb one. Then they told me because they needed me to work with calories. I didn't want to work with calories, so I just like did it somehow. I don't know. Uh, I think I asked you to eat or something to help me, but it was it was wrong according to their philosophy, their uh, theology. So uh, I had to do it once more. And when I did it, because you had to pay more, so I was very angry that I had to put more money into this, but whatever I did. And then I did the other trial, and I made it again, a low-carb one. Uh, that one was actually accepted, because it was it was uh, good with the calories and all that. And then that woman, you know, asked me some questions. She was like, but why are you always doing, like, low-carb meal plans? Like, are you, are you into such kind of a diet? I was like... Well, yeah, I yeah. am. Like, I I didn't say carnivore, but I said low carb. She was like, but like, do you know that you cannot say it to everybody? To ever like, everyone is individual. Everyone needs a different diet. You cannot force it to everybody. I was like, um, well, I started talking about some things. I don't remember exactly what, but I remember one thing because I told her, yeah, like glucose is toxic. I just said it like, you know, by the way, and she was like, what? glucose is toxic i was like yeah and then i kept going like oh my god they're so brain dead i don't get it yeah like what is, that's what i always tell people um, if, if if they're blown away by me saying that i go what is diabetes do you know what diabetes is i mean like like actually what is the disease process of diabetes what is the thing damaging these people's tissues and leading to all of these different things it's glucose that's the problem. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, yeah, like people do not understand the, the the that's a fundamental fact that should be taught. Like that's fundamental. <laughs> um, the the I I mentioned this in the interview that that we previously did where you were interviewing me that uh, either it was in that interview or it was after when we were talking afterwards because I I'd said that people are not taught how to think. So you were asking all of these questions to these people and what their answers were, 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 were something along the lines of, well, because it's healthy or well, because it is the way it is. And that's just how it, that is a sign. If anyone says that to you, if anyone cannot actually answer your questions, that is a sign that they are completely brainwashed and they're being taught that they have been taught what to think, not how to think. Like if they, if they believe all these things, but they can't explain why they believe them, it's not only uh, extremely silly and, and pathetic, uh, it's actually dangerous. It's, ex it's extremely dangerous because if you don't know why you're saying what you're saying and believing what you're believing, well, then it could be very, very wrong. Uh, and therefore, it can therefore be very, very dangerous. Um, and like, the, like the salt and insulin thing. Yeah, well, yeah, salt can cause the body to retain more water. Sure. Uh, that's in the presence of when the body retains a lot of sodium. What causes the body to retain a lot of sodium? That's insulin and aldosterone, the subsequent effects of that. And then you have increased blood volume and then increased blood pressure. So it's not salt itself. What happens when you consume too much salt that the body can't handle and you've got low insulin? Well, guess what? It'll be excreted by the kidneys. So, you know, all the, all those things. You actually answered a question on here. I, I was going to say, you know, what were you taught there? Were you taught the same, non, the normal nonsense? It seems, uh, yeah, you, you definitely were. So, um, I, but yeah, you, you, go on. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> actually, there was one more thing because I don't remember most of it. It was really garbage that I read, but there was one thing that happened there that was, you know, they were talking about, um, about some diets like uh, vegetables and all these vegetarian diet and blah, blah, blah. And they were talking about micronutrients and they mentioned, yeah, you know, this vitamin, it's, it's in natto, you know, that soy disgusting thing. And, uh, and that woman said, yeah, yeah, like natto, it's such a, such a health food, it's super food, like it's extremely disgusting, but it's healthy. I'm like, okay, so it's disgusting, but it's healthy for some reason. Why do you think it's disgusting to you, right? Like, <laughs> Where, do you think that she was talking about vitamin K? 
believe it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, because it was interesting because we talked about vitamin K as it being mostly in green plants, uh, which is garbage because the the bio the bioavailability uh, I cannot speak <laughs> the bioavailability of that vitamin in plants it's vitamin K two, I guess this right yeah so and that one is not bioavailable or it can be but we never know to what extent it's k and so k it's actually k2 is the is the bioavailable one the one that plants have is k1 it's a completely different yeah, form. K1, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah yeah so i mean this is so stupid because people always and you know they're also saying yeah and then there is that pill uh varfarin it's called you know for for your blood um to not coagulate um and and people like doctors will tell you do not eat vegetables because high because something that is high in vitamin K is gonna make it not working or something. I was like, but why does it even matter? Like what? Yeah, it's just uh, just a lot of nonsense that's taught in those classes, uh, and it's it's just once again they're they're taught these bullet points, not the logic behind them. You know, that's really what it is. Um, but so not only did you have teaching um, that was completely ridiculous from from the nutrition you know space the nutrition nutritionist class basically, uh, but you also had teaching from someone else that you've mentioned we've mentioned actually a few times here. You referred to both of us in the previous interview or in, I think in the comment section as as students of of Bart K. In, a, in, yeah. in the most recent interview, um, how did you how did you come across him, and what were your first impressions? And when, by the way, that's a good question. Uh, well, it was my boyfriend. Actually, my boyfriend started to listen to him when he started his YouTube like years ago. Um, it took him some time to get subscribers in the beginning. It was quite slow, but now now it's better. But yeah, and so he listened to him since then. Really, since he started. Um, my boyfriend really likes the way he, he expresses himself because, um, you know, it's not like all these I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I think in my opinion is just that's how it is. Here it is, right? So I also like it. Uh, I started listening to him mainly because I would say it was the, the best person to learn from. Because when you look at the other, other people, it's not that scientific and... If it is, then it's kind of messy. Like I like Anthony Chafee, and I like his interview with, uh, with with other people. But sometimes it's you know he just cannot speak as well as Bart K. It's messy. Bart K speaks very clearly, and I really like that and appreciate it. You can learn a lot from him. Um, yeah, the only issue in the beginning was uh, his his. Australian or New Zealand, uh, New Zealand accent that was kind of um, complicated for me to comprehend because he speaks a lot quite fast. So I uh, always had to have the subtitles on. But I, I also improved my English because I was with my boyfriend, so he's not Czech, so we speak in English. Um, so I think now it's definitely better. But in the beginning, it was kind of uh, I had to. I remember listening to the video of uh, Randall Cycle, like the an hour or two long one, and I I had like ten minutes for at least a half an hour. So, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. So when you say that you learned from him and you, you you refer to yourself as a student of him, did you learn from primarily watching his videos on YouTube or did you actually migrate to his other platform, uh, Odyssey, to look at his older older content? Um, well, I know that my boyfriend watched his older content, so he told me he taught me, I would say, most of it, but he has it from Bart K. And what I, what I learned myself is from him. I also asked him many things. I had the video about cholesterol and he also talked like privately in one meeting about something that I wanted to ask. So yeah, I, I really trust him when it comes to science, you know, when Bartke says something and like, okay, I'll think about it, right? It's, it's not just, it's not just, because when most people say something and they don't, the, the thing is, Bart K always reasons himself. That's what. That's actually the reason why I like him and my boyfriend does. Because it's not like just saying, I, I said it because I say so because it's like that and I think that. He always reasons his his opinions and his uh, claims. So so yeah, that's that's what I really like about it. And 
I learned to be that way as well. So I think it's mainly from Bart K that uh, my boyfriend has this too, and that I got it from my boyfriend through Bart K, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, it's it, yeah. You're. We we agree basically. The 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 at the end of the day, when people when people talk about things in the carnivore space or even in the health space in the first place, no matter what they are, they don't often go into the science. And if they do, it's really superficial. So at the end of the day, um, when Bart was whenever I came across him and he was really digging into actual scientific, you know, um, fundamentals and and granular details that most people, you know, I'd venture to guess don't know uh, at least not yet. I, I was like, oh, well, now that you're actually demonstrating that you have a knowledge of, of the of the topics, then, of course, I'm going to be more enticed into your ideology here because you have a foundation. For, it's just exactly what I was just explaining. You're not just saying bullet points or explaining why you believe what you believe and why all these yeah. other people are wrong. And he would do it with every sentence. Pause, pause, pause. And I was yeah, like, that, yeah, take, that yeah, takes some skill. So <laughs> like that, that takes skill. And now I'm the one, you know, I'm also someone that does the same thing. I didn't think that I was ever able to do that, but, and I wouldn't have been able to do it whenever I found, uh, when I discovered him, like at all. But, uh, you know, I, I noticed in, in the interview that you did with Bart on his channel, um, you seem to have an interest in biochemistry and overall physiology. That was one of the first things that you started talking about. Um, now maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that was just something you looked into before that interview, but if if that if I'm not wrong, you actually have an interest in that. Is that a natural interest, or is that something that you developed once you were in the space? Once I was in the space, definitely. Yeah, because I, I I was the same way. I'm that biochemistry is like my main thing, cellular biology, main thing, right? And it was just one of those things. I was really fascinated by it once I recognized the importance of learning it. You know, it, it's like whenever I was in school, I never actually learned to learn most of the stuff that I was being taught. And I'm constantly amazed that now, whenever I've recognized the importance of it, and therefore I have an interest for it, whenever I go into learning these things, I go, oh yeah, I was learning this in school, but I completely forgot everything because it had no basis on, on anything that I wanted to do. Like I didn't have, I was just going through the motions. I didn't actually care about it. So it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, but how do you go about learning that yourself um, now that you're not being taught that by any professors or teachers, at least that I'm aware of? Um, well, I actually, when I was still at school, I, there was a, there was a thing we had to do. It was like a, a paper, something like a shorter bachelor, uh, bachelor work. So we did such a thing. It was shorter, but, <clears throat> or it was supposed to be shorter. I had it actually like twice as long. But <laughs> and I decided firstly, I, because I was interested in uh, literature, I still like it and history, um, mainly history now, so I, I was supposed to make, you know, such a work. But then I came across to the carnivore diet and I was like, hey, let, let me do this, right? So I think that was when I learned the most because I basically wrote it down. I made a, um, a basic overview of why carnivore is the, the right diet. And uh, there was also some history of the human diet. Uh, some of the toxins in plants, fiber, you know, all these things, not really in detail, but still an overview. Um, so I think that's when I learned the most for the carnivore diet and just in the space. But then as I went further, I got kind of a frame of what I can look into. And I was further, uh, you know, getting more into that. So let's say... I firstly got to know about all that cholesterol things because that what what's interesting me like a lot, I would say the most from everything. And so I started looking into it. I watched some interviews, I read some things, and I talked about it with Barkay eventually. So, you know, I just dig more. But the basic frame I definitely got when I was writing that work. Yeah, yes. Yeah, it's, it's actually funny that you 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 wrote this whole thing about why the the carnivore diet is the is the optimal diet um, because I don't know how you could have made it as short as 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 short as you had to because my I tried doing that as well and it turned out to be my book 
<laughs> like I was, I was yeah. trying to do that and it turned out to be a huge book. And I was like, oh, well, I might as well just make it a book, you know, but uh, like if, if anyone that is watching is curious about what the book is, it is basically that it is us, it is me trying to make a case for carnivore. In reality, it's it's trying to figure out what diet is the most indicated for our species, yeah. and then you arrive at carnivore. That's like the whole thing. Um, yeah, now I also, I also cannot do it now because I also thought, okay, I'm going to make like a book, but like a simple one, right? Because all the books, I don't know, you wrote and other people, it's it's long. It's very like for reading. But I was thinking, okay, let's make a simple version. But now when I know more than I knew back then, it's so difficult. Like I just, I, I started writing the the history. It's like thirty pages, and I'm still in the middle or something. And I'm like, well, that's just history. What what what, what comes more, right? Like all the mental things that I discovered later, all the things with cancer, with mitochondria, and all the details. And now I know more, and I'm like, what? I I cannot do it. So, um, I'll see what I'll do. I'm also thinking of writing you know separate parts of it and then uh, eventually putting it on my website in like a simpler version and then the the more in detail version i would try to sell or something but yeah i'm trying to work on it but it's difficult so i understand you know i think i was able to do it back then because i had before that i had no clue about nutrition about science about anything so anything that came and was like interesting i was like wow and i wrote it down you know uh so so that's how i was able to do but now i'm not i'm not at all now so <laughs> yeah um g going towards your uh channel here because you have a channel up and it's pretty it's pretty new um there were some videos that you've now removed and you were talking about how you would remove some and you said that you're changing your approach uh, wh what made you can you explain what the approach originally was and why you've now decided to change to change it into something else well before before it was very random like i just saw a video I was like okay i'm gonna make a reaction i was quite mean <laughs> in the reactions to uh to gil uh carvajalo especially like <laughs> i milked him kind of because on that i got many many views and then it went very well after these two reactions so thanks to gil i i got more more views <laughs> but um yeah, so I think that was the reason because not only there but also uh, in the comments I was kind of mean I would say and I wanted it from now I want to use it more as a business thing like so that people can look what my creation is can learn something it's very educational but basics it's not in detail so that's what I that's what my approach is now I want to because I'm making it in the drawing style so it's all like animations and I want people to look at it and understand the basics so they can then, you know, make a make a frame of what the carnivore diet is about and why am I saying what I'm saying. Um, and basically just to educate people because I, I don't think uh, most people would go as deep as uh, we do or especially someone like Bart Gay or, you know, people like that. And I don't think most people would do it ever um so this is like a like a way for most people i would say just to have a basic overview basically what's what's said in the in the um in the conventional nutrition but the right way not wrong so what they teach you in these courses is not in detail but it's wrong but i teach it the right way yeah do you think that you'll start uh do you think that you could start a second channel for the other type of content you were uploading that isn't business related? Or do you think that um, that still probably wouldn't be the best idea if you're wanting the first one, the main one to succeed? Well, I was more thinking of putting it on a rumble or something instead to separate it completely. Um, because I also, I'm interested not only that, but also in the, um, in the lifestyle thing and in the moral ideas and philosophy that is now kind of um, interesting i would say in the world to look how it's where it turned in and you know so i could also make videos about that but that would be probably on the rumble but i i don't really have um time i don't want to say time i could have time but i don't want to invest all my time in that so it's it's already taking a long time to make that animation so I'll see, but probably in the future, maybe. Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So, so we've already 
we've already touched on what your sort of the ultimate goal of your channel is then. So what's your ultimate personal goal with all this though? Where, where do you want all this to lead you personally? Um, well, I don't want to work like most people go to work. So this is something that, you know, I'm very humble. I don't need lots of money or anything. Um, but I want to educate people and help people this way. And I just thought it's a, it's a good idea because, uh, well, in America, it's, it's quite known nowadays. The carnivore diet is in the space, but in other countries like the Czech Republic, it's, it's not, um, it's not a common thing to, to talk about actually. So I just thought it's kind of unique, so it could spread well. And it's something that I actually enjoy and I could help people, you know, understand. And I have this obsession is that, you know, when someone says some, some bullshit, I just cannot, I just cannot be quiet and leave it. I have to say it's wrong. I have to. So with this personality, I thought, okay, I can do it, but actually, you know, professionally, um, I can, I can lead people the right way for their results. I'm not going to be, uh, I'm not going to steal their money for some stupid meal plans that don't work anyway. Uh, and I'm just going to teach them. That's basically all I'll do because you cannot sell meal plans. Like what will you write there? Chicken Monday, uh, beef Tuesday or like what the hell, you know, you cannot do it. So it will just be more like a course like consultations. What I am, what I'm thinking of. Uh, yeah. So it's all in process. <laughs> Well, I, I wish you luck on that. I think that there's a lot of potential there. I didn't yeah, think that you. I was going to get to where, even just to the point where I am now. Uh, but, you know, you're you're building it from the ground up, but I, I definitely think that you can you can do that. In order for it to work, um, you know, in order to get to that point, though, people need to go and watch your stuff uh, and be introduced to you and be, interact with your channel. So where can people find you, not only on YouTube, but, you know, all the other platforms that you're on right now? Uh, well... It's mainly on YouTube, which is Meaty Dash Bunny. Um, then I also have a, an Instagram, but I don't really have much content there. Yeah, I post something, but it's not um, my main, main, um, you know, something to th that I post like a, a, a lot <laughs> that I post often. <laughs> and that's Meaty mm, underscore Bunny. So it's similar, but it's just lower. And then I have my website actually just from a few days ago. Um, and that's nourishedbynature.be. Um, yeah, so that's basically where anyone can find all the information about me, contacts, and you know, all these things. Okay, yeah, I will put all of those in the description below so that people can go ahead and uh, subscribe and check all that stuff out. Uh, Stephanie, thank you for coming up on the channel. Um, once again, I was really I, I was really anticipating this because of the similarity in our age and also our interests. <laughs> so it's nice to actually see more people our age getting into this this group. And I know that I sound like I'm 40 years old whenever I say that stuff. You know, it's really nice to see the young ones coming into the space. But no, I, I, mean, I mean it. I recognize the importance of it. So um, yeah, this will definitely not be the last time we talk of course not. I say that to everyone, and I mean it when I say that. Um, so, yeah. With that being said, uh, I will I will talk to you soon. <laughs> mm -hmm. I I thank you also very much. It was amazing to talk like this. It's I would say it's different to talk to you and then to talk to the older people because it just it's, it's just so refreshing, you know, to to have someone like that with kind of life drive. Um, in it so yeah thank you very much yeah no i i definitely agree yeah but absolutely definitely <laughs>